All right, joining us now here on Pittsburgh Sports Now is a face that's familiar to everyone, Paul Zeiss, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, and 93.7, and also uh, father of number 25, the guy you see in the background, Elijah Zeiss. I know that's your most important job. Uh, Saturday, I saw you on the field before the game, during the game. Uh, how was senior day for you? Uh, I heard Paul uh, Elijah's, excuse me, Elijah's interview afterward. He says a little emotional, but he kept everything together, as you uh, no doubt would expect him to. Uh, how'd you keep things together? Uh, was uh, how were things for uh, for you and the family? Well, I mean, I think for you know for us, for me, it's really tough. I mean, I think people uh, don't really quite understand. Elijah kind of grew up around pit football. I mean. I was covering the team. I started in 2001, so he was six years old when he was coming to practices with me, coming to spring practices, coming to training camp with me, going to, you know, he started going to the pit football camp. He knew a lot of the coaches. He'd come to practices, and him and Paul Rhodes' kids would play football on the sidelines. I mean, this is a kid that has grown up in pit football, and I've sort of watched him grow up, you know, and, you know, I've gone down to camps and watched him play, uh, you know, in the seven on sevens down there and um, stuff like that. So uh, it, for him, this has been you know, 16 years of his life, pit football. So for me to sit there and watch him run out of the tunnel, knowing this is the last time, you know, he's going to run out of the tunnel being a member of pit football. And, you know, you're all, I guess it's like the Marines. You're never a former pit player, but, you know, it's, it's really going to be tough. I didn't think it would hit me as hard as it did. But the moment was probably too big for me. <laughs> like, this is it. Like, even when he graduated from North Allegheny, and I knew that was his last game, I was kind of, all right, well, he's got, you know, five more years or four more years to play football. But, I mean, it's kind of one of those things where you, you just sort of felt like, wow, I'll never be in Heinz Field again watching him play football. And I guess that you really don't realize as you go through it how quickly it goes. And really how much of a part of, uh, you know, your life it is that you, you go down to Heinz Field and watch these games. And, you know, uh, so, yeah, it was a rough one for me. And, and I know for him it was tough just because the same same type thing. Man, he's grown up. He's grown up with pit football. And that's really all he's known. And it's really all, he, you know, he's, he's ever really wanted to be a pit football player. Well, you know, that was his last, ten, last time to do it at home. Well, Obviously, we uh, they're hoping uh, there's a few more big games ahead, but let's. I wanted to focus with you on the the decision of uh, being a pit football player. As you know, this discussion, uh, especially this time of the year, comes up uh, all the time. Kids deciding to go elsewhere, not staying home. Uh, you know, the cynics out there. There's uh, you know, there's no diminish the value of kids staying home and just how important that is not only for the program but also for them and how you know how it benefits everyone just from your perspective uh, what did it mean to you and how how do you think it benefited this is probably gonna be a long answer because there's a lot of benefits but um, how did it impact you your family and Elijah deciding to stay home well, I mean, like I said, he's grown up with pit football. So it was, you know, that was something he's always wanted to do. But he had, you know, a lot of different opportunities. And there were some that were interesting and some that he looked into, you know. But as we went through the process, and everybody's process is different. You know, I, I talked to him as somebody who covered the team, who's been around the, the team for a long, long time, who's covered recruiting and all that stuff. And I talked to him a lot about, listen, you know, if you come to pit, the one thing that you have at Pitt, besides your family being very close and us being able to watch all the games and all the other stuff, um, the coaching staff is going to do their best to try and take care of you because you're a local guy. You know, if you go somewhere, you know, you go three states away, you better be good pretty quickly because if not, they're recruiting someone from that area and, you know, it's probably going to come in over your head because they don't have to worry about coming back here to your high school to go get, you know, and, and so... Um, and I've seen that happen far too often to good players who maybe gone away somewhere and got hurt and got lost, you know. Great example with Elijah, what was his second year, third year, when he, he missed the entire season with his, with his ankle injury, you know. That's something that maybe if he's not at Pitt, 
he doesn't get a real opportunity to recover from because it's like, all right, well, we got a guy that's, you know, from the local area or whatever. We're going to we're gonna give him the opportunity. And next thing you know, you know, he gets buried on the, the depth chart. It doesn't always work like that, but that was an important part of the decision for him. The other part of it was, you know, I, I think what people don't understand is just how big time of football you're going to get to play at Pitt. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I watched my son play at Notre Dame on national TV. I, I don't know how much bigger it gets than that, honestly. People say to me, oh, well, you know, you know, this program or that program. Okay, would you have liked him to win a few more games than he did? Yeah, okay. He, but I think, honestly, the Pat Narduzzi is getting this thing. It's taking him a little bit of time, but I think this thing's going to get going, and they're going to they have opportunities to win and everything else. But here's the thing. If they win one more game, He's going to have an opportunity to play game against Clemson in the ACC championship game on national television, and you know, and and you know, he's gotten to play at Penn State, he's gotten to play at Miami, you know, he's gotten to play out of you know Oklahoma State, all these other places. He's playing big time football, and so I don't, I'm not sure why there's this perception that just because Pitt is in Alabama, that it's not you know that you're not going to get the opportunity to play big time football. The bottom line is you're in the ACC, which is one of the five most, you know, the five biggest conferences. You get to play a lot of great games against a lot of good teams and a lot of great venues. And, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of what you can do. I mean, they, they, they have a chance to go play in the ACC championship game. And that's something, too. This senior class has been through a lot, you know, coaching changes and all the other stuff. For them to be the first class to get to – you know, the ACC championship game, that's a legacy they can leave. And, and you know what? That's why it's important for them to win one of these two games and, and finish that, finish the job that they've started. So at the end of the day, it's been a great experience for him on every level. And then on top of that, in May, he's going to have two degrees, one in accounting and one in finance from a really good business school. So... We've gotten a chance to watch him his career, you know. He's gotten a chance to, to, to do what he wanted to do as a little kid, which is play football at the highest level. And he's got a great education. And the big thing with him, and this was a big thing with him, he got to do it with a lot of his friends that he grew up with because a lot of his friends go to Pitt or, you know. He actually spent, it's funny, he actually spent a lot of weekends in the offseason up at Penn State because he's got a lot of friends that played, you know, that, that went to Penn State to school there. He actually went to West Virginia a lot of times, you know. Uh, what's that thing they have in, at Penn State in the summer, the, 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 the Greek fun, Festival yeah. or the Fawn or whatever, yeah. it is, whatever it is, that big arts festival or whatever. He's there every single year because he's got a lot of friends that go to Penn State. He's got a lot of friends that go to West Virginia. So he was able to do a lot of different things by staying home. Now, again, it's not for everybody, but I think that sometimes when I hear the reasoning why people go elsewhere, I don't know that they're really thinking it through you know, completely the right way and the whole, you know, thinking it through, you know, to me, if you're thinking, well, you know, I'm going to go here because it's bigger time football. I mean, okay, you want to tell me to go to Ohio State, maybe, or whatever, but there ain't many places, you know. We're talking about Pitt. There's, you know, Pitt is in that, that category probably in what, from the, you know, m number 15 to like number 40, that whole group of schools right there. Yeah. There ain't that many places that are bigger than that. And so um, that's what, I, that's what I've, I've, I've really appreciated and liked. And you know what? He made a mature decision because that's what he said to me. You know what, Dad? I mean, where am I going to go? That, you know, uh, he had a couple opportunities to go to some Big Ten schools and whatnot. He said, where am I going to go that's bigger than, than this? And, and where am I going to get opportunities to do things that I can do here? So, yeah, it's been a great experience for him. I think it's been a great experience for a lot of his teammates that stuck stuck here and fought through the coaching change and all that other stuff. You know, it's it's pretty cool for me to see this entire senior class sort of get rewarded. Uh, just to piggyback off of that, talking about the senior class, uh, how appreciative of you or are you of the way that you know when you when a coaching cast uh, coaching staff comes in. You know, they're, they're, they're worried about themselves. They want to win games. They want to develop the program, get kids ready. Uh, Pat Narduzzi, whatever you want to say about the guy, he was very uh, loyal to not only Elijah, but also his whole class. He could have maybe shoved, uh, you know, put them in the background and 
start getting some other kids. He stuck loyal to that, and that's something that uh, stuck with you, right? You know, it's interesting you bring that up because Friday before the game, they had a little banquet type thing, a little reception for the seniors and their parents. Just sort of a, hey, you know, uh, we got to watch some videos, and, and Pat Narduzzi was there. And that was one of the things I actually said to him. I said, I actually thanked him and said, listen, a lot of coaches come in and they want their own guys. You could have cast this whole class aside or most of these guys and said, we're going to start over or, you know what? But you stuck with these guys, and you know what? I think it's it's, it's really paid off for you because they're, 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 they've been a big part of this year's success. And he just started laughing. He said, well, they're my guys. You know, if it, anybody commits to Pitt or anybody that comes to Pitt, we want them to succeed. Um, so what are we going to do, throw them aside? Um, but, yeah, that was a big concern of everybody. But it's pretty cool when you see all the people that Elijah went through the recruiting process with. And some of these families that we've known for four, five, six years, they're all starting to, you know, it's starting to pay off for them. So, again, you know, you hope that they just finish this job and, and win one more time so they, they can get to Charlotte. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's great when we, uh, when we go on these road trips as a group of parents that, you know, we've been with it for five years now, seniors, and um, it's been fun to watch all of the kids grow up together. You know, I mean, that's, that's what's been the, the, the greatest part about it. I want to also ask you about Pat Narduzzi. Um, he has a perception in the media. He is very strict in what he does. He, he has it his way. And like it or not, that's, you know, that's the way he's going to do things. However, you have to deal with that. You don't really deal with that so much. You deal with it a lot with the being the parent. And I know you, or at least I believe you, you have a different side to him, a side that we, me, and the rest of the guys in the media, we don't, we don't see very often. He's a different, he's a different guy. He, he, players coach is thrown out a lot. That term's thrown out a lot. He, he's a definition of a player's coach, isn't it? No, there's no question about it. I mean, here's the thing. You know, the perception of Pat Narduzzi is that he's stubborn, right? Yeah. And he's arrogant, right? Okay. Show me a successful coach that isn't those two things, stubborn and arrogant. Because when you believe in what you're doing, you, you believe that this is what it, the, the way it takes to win. So if you're going to be a successful coach, you got to have those two traits, really. I mean, and it doesn't matter. I mean, some, sometimes it manifests differently. I mean, some guys aren't quite as maybe outwardly arrogant as others. But the bottom line is, if that's the perception of him, it's because he's a, he's a coach. This is what I would say. Um, the flip side of it is, I honestly don't know that I could thank him enough for you know what he's done for Elijah, and I bet you most parents would say the same thing in terms of he's a guy that really loves his players. I mean, you know, he, I know he's hard to deal with with the media because he's you know he's an obstructionist or whatever, yeah. and doesn't give you know a lot of interviews, and it's tough to get one on ones with anybody and all that stuff. And there, you know, there's a very strict schedule, so you don't see that side. But some of that is he's got his players back, and he wants to make sure that you know none of them are cast in a bad light or put in a bad situation. Um, but he's a guy who go to bat for his players, and he really and I think. That one of the things that you nobody can ever say about Pitt under him is that that team doesn't play their hearts out every single week because they do. They play hard. I mean, you know, they 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 you know the, the end of the Penn State game things got away from them a little bit, and you know maybe they gave, had a little bit of a letdown, but for the most part they fight till the end of every single game. Doesn't mean they win every game, but they fight hard. A lot of that is because you know that's sort of the the atmosphere they have there now. He can be really difficult in terms of being a task, taskmaster. You know, he's he's asks a lot of those guys. But his feeling is, you know what, we're going to push you and push you and push you and create a really competitive environment because we feel that's going to make our team better. You know, and again, if you don't want to be pushed and you don't want to be in a competitive environment, how are you going to play Division One football? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the reality. So I think Pat, Pat is, you know, and, I, and again, I thanked him on Friday night for, for, for being so good to Elijah, and not just Elijah. I mean, Shane Roy is, is one of Elijah's best friends from five years ago, you know, growing up basically together in terms of growing up here at Pitch. 
you know, Felipe Motley, uh, you know, the two running backs. You look along, you know, Alex Boxer, you know, Brian O'Neill, who's not here, but, you know, you know, he, he was with that group. Quentin Virginis. Those guys, it was really cool to watch how big of a role they've gotten to play over the last two years because, you know, they've stuck through a lot together. But, again, he has really had their back, like as if he recruited them, you know, even though he didn't recruit them. Even, and, and so that's what I like the most about him. I just think, again, as a father, I'm really, I couldn't be happier with Elijah's experience, honestly. And, and, and I know, you know, again, do I, want, do I wish you they would have won some more games? Oh, yeah, okay, of course. I mean, but I think to me, when you look back at his experience, uh, the things he's going to remember the most, the relationships he made, right, the things that are going to mean the most to him, the degrees he got, and, and also the mentors that he had. And in those three categories, it's been off the charts for him. Big game ahead. We're going to get to football here. This last thing here is, you know, they have a chance, obviously, to make – university football program history here. I don't know that a lot of people uh, after the two and three start thought this was going to be happening, but they uh, got things together. The players, to their credit, didn't, uh, you know, maybe like what happened at Louisville or some other places, they didn't uh, quit on their coach. They uh, continued to fight. Now they're a win away from going to the uh, ACC title game. If there's one thing, how did this thing come together? Did you, are you even surprised that, they put all this together and sit where they are right now. Well, you know, sitting in the 100-degree heat down in Central Florida and watching that disaster, um, I didn't feel real good about the rest of the season, to be honest. Uh, and, you know, it's it just as an aside, you know, Elijah was horrible that game, you know, and, and I told him about it. And I think one of the things that I liked is after the game, I was like, Elijah, you got seven games left in your career. You understand that now. Like, this is not, you know, you either get it to get it going or he's going to find someone that will, you know, because that's just me. I mean, unfortunately, he's my son, and I'm not going to sugarcoat things. But what I like, what he said, I checked in with him again, you know, midway through the next week of practice because they are getting ready to play Syracuse. So how's practice going? This and he said, yeah, he says, I, I took to heart what you said. And, you know, I'm just, he said, but I, I think there's a little bit different vibe this week is a little more energy I don't know what it is he said and it's not just me he's like you know he was t telling me that he felt good about and then they went out and won that game right they lost to Notre Dame but coming out of that Notre Dame game they felt really good about themselves because they said you know what? we ain't gonna play anybody as good as this team the rest of the way period and frankly we probably should have won this game right and you know he said to me after that game you know what dad I'm starting to think that might we might have a shot to turn this thing around so I still was like, wow, boy, they got a long road to haul, you know. But every week they've gotten better. And, and now the big thing with them, and, and it's a pit thing, <laughs> they've got to finish the job, you know. They can't get, I told them, can't get fat and happy now. You haven't accomplished anything, nothing. You guys have accomplished nothing. you got to get out there and you got to win one and preferably two of these next couple of games here and put yourself in a really good position to go into, you know, the ACC championship game with a lot of momentum. So I was really unsure that this was capable, that even up to the Virginia game. Like I went down driving down to Virginia thinking, hmm, you know, this is going to be the one that, you know, sort of knocks them out of whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'll give him credit. Before that game, I said to Elijah, I said, what do you, what do you think about the matchup? He said, we match up with this team really well. He said, I think we, we're going to be all right today. Or, you know, tomorrow. I talked to him on Thursday. He said, I think we're going to be all right tomorrow. We, we match up really well, better than you probably think. But I still am driving down there thinking this is, you know, on the road. This is they've had a couple of games where they've played well but lived dangerously. So, you know, the Wake Forest game, they've got to play well. If they don't play well, they're going to lose. <laughs> Period. Wake Forest is good enough. And Wake Forest, you know, they, 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 they're a team that thrives on big plays, you know, especially in the passing game down the field. So they've got to play really well, just like they did, and they've got to run the ball well. And I think, you know, they're going to have to make some plays in the passing game too. But defensively, um, they're going to have to play like they've played the last few weeks to really have a shot. And if they do it, you know what? Then you go down to Miami, 
and you, whatever happens, happens. But, you, you know, there, there's no pressure at that point. You just go down and play a game and play as well as you can play in the sun and have, you know, have fun and try and finish it off the right way. Uh, last thing, this promise this time. Uh, it would be pretty cool uh, for them to win one of these next two games, preferably uh, Wake Forest. And it would almost be that this is the last class but also could be be the sign of the turn in the program. You know the fans; they're always looking what's going to happen wrong with us. The pit, you know, woe is me, all that stuff. This could be the sign that maybe this will be the class that got things going here. Because you win a championship, then the no doubt out's going to help recruiting. Hopefully, it helps attendance. They're not going to have questions about Pat and our do. You know, people aren't going to be negative. They're going to actually go into a season with everything positive. So. This could be something huge long term for the program. Well, I think yeah. It, it, here's the thing: he's got to build on it, though. You know, uh, you know, and, and I think one of the things that uh, people don't want to hear, but I think the next couple of years, the non-conference schedule is a little more conducive to you know really running off and reeling off and getting to 10, 11 wins, which is what you want to do. You run a, a couple of 10, 11 win seasons in a row. You know, now all of a sudden you you started to take that next step, but. Um, I think if you look at what's coming back after this year and what they're going to add and some of the guys that aren't even playing right now, the red shirts, I think that the program is in pretty good shape. You know, I think they need to, they need probably to figure out some things with the offensive line next year because they're losing a lot of guys on that particular unit. But if you look around, I mean, there's a lot of reason to believe that this is going to be a really good football team next year. They got a quarterback in place. They got a lot of the receivers back in place. They don't have obviously the two running backs, but they have some younger guys that are pretty good. Um, and the defense is going to still have a ton of players. I mean, yeah, you know, if you look at the, uh, the 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 linebackers, for instance, okay, you're going to lose, you know, Sean. You're going to lose Elijah and Quentin, who's hurt. But you know, Celine Brightwell was a starter for you know all of last year, and he's going to step right into Elijah's spot. You've got. Uh, Elias Reynolds, who's actually gotten a jump on his start, you know, at, at the middle linebacker spot. And, you know, what's the kid's name? Cam Bright. Uh, is, Chase is, Pine. And, you know, they have a lot of guys that fill out other spots that have played a lot of football. So I don't think they should miss a beat. I think, I think they should take it to the next level. But, again, you can't get too far ahead of yourself if you're Pitt. I, I like their approach, which has just been, well, let's be 1-0 in the ACC this week. Because that's really – and it goes for years, too, seasons. You know, finish this season, then go into the off season, have a great recruiting class, you know, finish it strong, you know, in, in the first early signing period, then whatever you need in the, the later signing period, have a great spring, come into the, you know, fall with, with momentum and, 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 you know, every single day get better. Cause I do think the elements are there for this program to take off. And, you know, unfortunately for us, you know, Elijah will be, no, you know, Elijah will be gone, but he'll be able to watch it from afar. And, you know, you know he'll be a, a pit guy for life. All right, Paul, appreciate the time. We'll, uh, who knows, maybe we'll check in with you before the uh, ACC title game. But we got a one, one win at a time, one, one game at a time approach. One win at a time. But if we do that, I definitely will we'll talk to you about the ACC title game. All right, everyone, thanks. Uh, we'll have Paul on again, but we appreciate you tuning in here to uh, – Paul's Ice Talk here on Pittsburgh Sports Now.